back to Fairy Frequency Channel. If you're new, please uh, do smash that big red button and the little bell that you'll find after that so that you can get all of our channel notifications. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and share with a friend. Um, so let's just dive right in. This is a very short book. Should be able to get through it and just one take or one part. Uh, if you do like this author, this amazing author, George W. Carey, you'll find that we have read another book by his called God Man, The um, Word Made Flesh, and you might enjoy that too. Look in our playlist tabs for it, and um, we'll also be starting another playlist tab to showcase all of our uh, George W. Carey works. Um, starting with God, man, and then the Antichrist, and we do have um, a couple more of his books. Let's see, they are the Biochemic System of Medicine and the works here, which is actually three books, The Tree of Life, The Chemistry of Life, and The Wonders of the Human Body. So we'll be diving into those later. But for now, let's get started with this very interesting read. The Antichrist by George W. Carey. I believe this was originally published in 1918. Could have been possibly earlier. Still researching that, so... Let's dive right in. There are three parts to this book um, from what I've understood from reading through Google about some of the descriptions of it. It may possibly be excerpted from Godman. So let's just get into it. Primitive Christians, the Essenes, fully realized and taught the great truth that Christ was a substance, an oil or ointment contained especially in the spinal cord. Consequently, in all parts of the body, as every nerve in the body is directly or indirectly connected with the wonderful river that flows out of Eden, that is the upper brain, to water the garden. The early Christians knew that the scriptures, whether written in ancient Hebrew or in Greek, were allegories, parables, or fables based on the human body, fearfully and wonderfully made. These adepts knew that the secretion, gray matter creative, that issues secretes from the cerebrum was the source and cause of physical expression called man. And they knew that the river of Jordan was symbolized in the spinal cord and that the Dead Sea was used to symbolize the sacred plexus at the base of the spinal column where the Jordan spinal cord ends, typifying the entrance of Jordan into the Dead Sea. The thick, oily, and salty substance composing the sacral plexus, cauda equina, tail of the horse, may be likened unto crude petroleum, petra, mineral or salt, and oleum, Latin for oil. And the thinner substance, oil or ointment, in the spinal cord may be compared with coal oil, and when this oil is carried up and crosses the Ida and Pingala, two fluid nerves that end in a cross in Medulla Oblongata, where it contacts the cerebellum, Golgotha, the place of the skull, this fluid is refined and coal is, as coal is refined, to produce gasoline, a higher rate of motion that causes the ascension of the airship. When the oil ointment is crucified, to crucify means to increase in power a thousandfold and not to kill. It remains two days and a half, the moon period in a sign, in the tomb or cerebellum, and on the third day ascends to the pineal gland that connects the cerebellum with the optic thalamus and central eye in the throne of God that is the chamber overtopped by the hollow, hallowed, caused by the curve of the cerebrum, the most high of the body, which is the temple of the living God. The living vital substance, which is a precipitation of the breath of life, breathed into man, therefore the holy, whole, ghost, or breath. 
The pineal gland is the pinnacle of the temple, the modus operandi by which the oil of the spinal cord reaches the pineal gland is described in part two. Part two. There is no name under heaven whereby ye may be saved except Jesus Christ did and then crucified. Correct rendering of the Greek text. Every 28 and one half days when the moon is in the sign of the zodiac that the sun was in at the birth of the native, there is a seed or psychophysical germ born in the or out of the solar plexus, the manger. And this seed is taken up by the nerves or branches of the pneumogastric nerve and becomes the fruit of the tree of life or the tree of good and evil, viz. Good is saved and cast upon the water's circulation to reach the pineal gland and evil is eaten or consumed in sexual expression on the physical plane or by alcoholic drinks or gluttony that causes ferment, acid, and even alcohol in intestinum tract thus no drunkard can inherit from the kingdom of heaven for acids and alcohol cut or chemically split the oil that unites with the mineral salts in the body and thus produces the monthly seed this seed having the odor of a fish was called jesus from ictos greek for fish and nun hebrew for fish thus joshua the son of nun i am the bread of life I am the bread that came down from heaven, and give us this day our daily bread. The fruit of the tree of life, therefore, is the fish bread, or which thou shalt not eat on the plane of animal of or Adam, earth dust of the earth plain, but to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, because he saved it, and it returned to him in the cerebellum the home of the spiritual man, the ego. The cerebellum is heart-shaped and called the heart in Greek thus, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The bodily organ that men in their ignorance call heart is termed divider or pump in Greek and Hebrew. Our blood divider is not the button that we touch when we think, but it is the upper lobe of cerebellum that vibrates thought. The lower lobe is animal or moral lobe that governs the animal world. That section of the body below the solar plexus called lower Egypt, natural body, kingdom of earth, Apollon, the devil lived spelled backwards satan saturn governs the bowels etc fire and brimstone the leak of fire comes from the fact that sulfur or brimstone is the prime factor in generating the rate of motion called heat and overeating develops a surplus of sulfur the seed born every 28 and one half days making 13 and 365 days that is 13 months remains two and one half days in bethlehem the house of bread then is carried up pneumo or vagus gastric nerve and across the medulla oblongata and then enters the cere cerebellum to remain two and one half days thus when jesus was about 12 he appeared in the temple teaching the doctors the age of puberty is about 12, and then the first horn seed appears, and the sensation caused by its vibration tempts the native on the lower plane to do the thing that slays it, which is fully explained in Genesis by the serpent sex desire, tempting Adam and Eve, allegorical characters, from Krishna to Moses and Jesus, serpents and pharaohs, and he rods have striven to slay the firstborn. From the age of 12 to 30 in the life of Jesus, nothing is recorded, for 12 refers to puberty and 30 or 3 means physical, mental and spiritual, viz, body, flesh or soul, fluids and spirit, the ego. Breath is translated soul over 500 times in the Bible, therefore soul is precipitated air, spirit, which may be lost in physical desire and expression, waste or sin, viz, to fall short or saved by regeneration read matthew 17 through 28 also first epistle of john 3 through 9 so at the age of 
30, Jesus, the seed, began to preach to body, soul, and spirit. And as the seed was or is descending the spinal cord, the substance of which is symbolized by a formula of characters, I-O-H-N, as we symbolize water by H-2-O, it was baptized of John, no by John, synonyms, Saul, John, Christ, or gold, Jordan, word, Lord, oil, ointment. Baptize is from the Greek, from the Greek bapto, the effect of two chemicals when they unite and produce force that neither possessed singly. Here, the seed, immersed in the oil, John, was so increased in power that the Spirit of God descended like a dove, and a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, etc. Jordan means the descender, dove, to dive, a diver, see dictionary. Thus, Jesus, the seed, was the Son of Man, the carpenter or builder, until it was baptized in the precious ointment that was secreted from the Most High brain and descended the spinal cord and was thus given power to start on its journey to Jerusalem, God's city or of peace, and to be crucified at a place of the skull, then remain two and one half days in the tomb, and on the third day ascend to the Father. As this seed consumes its force every 28 and one half days and another born first comes out of the solar plexus or Bethlehem, we see why he was, is a sacrifice for our sins. And we see that as this seed taking on the Christ oil is enabled to reach the pineal gland and cause it to vibrate at a rate that heals all manner of diseases, that the statement, the blood of Christ cleanseth from all sin or deficiencies, viz., Falling short of substance is literally true. Part three. During the first three hundred years of the Christian era, all that has been ever all that has been above written was understood by the real Christians. <clears throat> and about the end of that time the persecution of these Essenes by the priesthood became so marked that they met in secret and always made the sign of the fish. About the year 325, Constantine, the pagan Rom Roman emperor, a monster in human form like Nero and the Beast of August 1914, called the degenerate teachers of Christianity together at Nicaea. Constantine murdered his mother and boiled his wife in oil because they still held to the original doctrines of the Essenes. Constantine was told by the priests of his time that there was no forgiveness for crimes such as his except through a long series of incarnations, but the Antichrist sought to concoct a plan by which he hoped to cheat the cosmic law. And so it came to pass, after months of wrangling and fighting over the writings of the primitive Christians who clothe the wonders of the human body in oriental imagery that the council, sometimes by a bare ma majority vote, decided which of the manuscripts were the word of God and which were not. The very important point in the minds of those ignorant priests, whether or, n whether or no an angel had wings, was decided in favor of wings by three majority. The minority contended that as Jacob let down a ladder for an angels to descend and ascend upon, it was prima facie evidence that angels do not have wings. Just think for a moment upon the colossal ignorance of these priests who did not know that Jacob in Hebrew means heel catcher or circle, and that latter referred to the influence of the signs of the zodiac upon the earth, and as one sign rising every two hours forms a circle every twenty-four hours, the four and twenty elders of revelations, the outer stars of the rising suns, suns, catching on to the last suns, suns, of the signs ascending, but now we come to the Antichrist. The Council of Nicaea, dominated by Constantine, voted that the symbols of the human body were persons, that Jesus was a certain historical man, a contention utterly and undubitably without foundation, in fact, and that all who believed, question mark, the story would be saved and forgiven here, and now the idea appealed to the monster Constantine as an easy way out of the troubled of his troubled mind, and so the scheme of salvation by the actual blood of a real man of God or God was engrafted in the world. 
Constantine, and his dupes saw that the only way to perpetuate the infamy was to keep the world in ignorance of the operation of cosmic law, so they changed times and seasons. The date that they made the sun enter Aries was March 21st. It's coming up. Why? March 21st should be the first day of Aries, the head. April 19th should be the first day of Taurus, the neck, and so on through the 12 signs. But these designing schemers knew that by thus suppressing the truth, the people might come to realize what was meant by the heavens declare the glory of God. Again, the moon in its monthly round of 28 and a half days enters the outer stars or suns <clears throat> of a constellation two and one half days before it enters the central suns of the constellation that are known as the signs of the zodiac or the circle of beasts. But even unto this day, the whole Antichrist world, a so-called Christian, except the astrologers, go by almanacs that make the moon enter sign of the zodiac two and one half days before it does enter it, and thus perpetuate the lie of the pagan Constantine, the Antichrist. Let me close with a deadly parallel. <clears throat> Antichrist. Christ was a man born of a woman. He died and he will come again. Christ, lo, I am with you always. He that believeth, believe means to do, shall never die. Antichrist, we are Christians and expect to die and then be saved. Christ, the wages of sin is death. All that I do, ye can do. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father is perfect. Antichrist, Christ is greater than man, therefore can save us. Christ, know ye not that the Holy Ghost breath dwelleth in you? Antichrist, only Jesus was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Christ, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Antichrist, we must die in order to get into the kingdom. The earth will be destroyed. Christ, the earth endureth forever. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Antichrist, I am a Christian. Christ, these signs shall follow those who believe, believe in me. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Antichrist, I am born of God because I believe or think that a crucified saint or good man will save me from sin. Christ, he that is born of God will not sin, for his seed remaineth in him. For more evidence that Jesus and Christ are in your flesh, see first epistle of John, fourth chapter, second and third verses. The Greek and Hebrew texts of our scriptures plainly teach that Jesus and Christ, John and baptism, crucifixion and ascension, the triumph of the ego over the enemy of death, and in this substance of potentialities of the body, and that these fluids can and will save the physical body if conserved and not consumed or wasted in sexual or animal desire. All of whatever name of religious denomination who teach a contrary doctrine agree with Constantine, who appeared in the latter days of the pure Christian practice. Who is the Antichrist? Look at a world of ruins. Does a good tree bring forth evil fruit? The so-called teachers of and believers in Christianity believe in Constantine and his priests that Christ is out in the desert of the Judean hills, out on Calvary, do they ever look for the meaning of Calvary in Greek? Calvary means a skull, and Golgotha, the place of the skull, exactly where the seed is crucified. One half of the com combatants in the world's Armageddon have been praying. A Constantine prayed, as Constantine prayed, for God's help, for Christ's sake. The other half pray to the same imaginary God and Christ out in the desert of their own ignorance for peace and victory. Return and come unto God and Christ within you, O ye deluded ones. And the bugles will all sing truce along the iron front of war, and the ransomed of the Lord will return to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their faces. That is the end of the Antichrist by George W. Carey. Hope you enjoyed this reading.
If you did, let me know in the comments. If you thought I could have done better, let me know in the comments. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to look through our playlists and explore for more awesome book readings and other videos you might enjoy. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day.